If you really think that the market's acting irrational, go ahead, bet on it, bet against it, but prepare to go broke. It's akin to standing in front of a train and saying, cut it out, stop right where you are. The train's just gonna run you right over. Welcome to the Outlier Trading Room. This is smart trading made simple. This is where we save time, make money, and start winning with less risk together as a team. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Christopher Yule. I've twice been awarded top 100 people in finance. I've been successfully trading since 2009. I'm a partner with Outlier, and this is my style of trading using the Outlier data. But before we start trading, let's get into the lesson of the day. All right, lesson of the day today are the three most common trading mistakes. I've not watched this. I'm curious to see what they have to say. So let's do this. All right, three most common trading mistakes. Got it. Subscribe now. Hello, and welcome to this week's trading strategy video with me, David Jones, and yeah. Trading 212. Now, we've covered quite a lot, I think, in recent weeks. We've looked at price action, oscillators, moving averages, breakouts, false breakouts, all this sort of stuff. So I thought this week would be a good opportunity to maybe just pause a little bit and um, look at what are some pretty common trading mistakes. And when it comes to trading mistakes, you can make a really long list, but I thought for the purposes of this, because it's gonna be a short video and um, people just don't have the attention span these days, um, let's look at the top three trading mistakes. Um, let's start off, number one, you will have heard this before, and we're gonna look at a real example from the last couple of weeks in a second. But I think one of the big problems is people cannot trade with the trend. They see a market, and there have been plenty of markets in recent weeks, uh, the Euro, oil, uh, stock markets, they see a market that's maybe doing that or doing that. And if a market's been going up, 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 they can't seem to bring themselves to buy into that market. They always want to try and pick the top, you know, so they... Mm, okay, I was wondering where he was going with that. I get that, right? Looking at a chart like this, it's like, well, it's going up. Clear. I am smarter than the market. Let me pick the top and it has to go down. One of the best examples I ever thought of somebody being completely foolish was I was following this trader. I wasn't taking his trades. What was his name? Uh, his website's called Slope of Hope. Hang on. We're going to Google it up. I'm going to call him out. Tim Knight. I was following one of his trades, not trades. I, I saw a Twitter post of his and um, I could probably go find it. In fact, uh, he was talking about Tesla when Tesla a few years back was having that like monster run. It could never go down. Like even teenagers were, which seems to be at the moment as well. Even teenagers were out there buying Tesla because, Hey, if you bought anything besides Tesla, you were an idiot, right? Um, like this run right here. I mean, split adjusted, you can see it was like practically zero. And then whoosh, right this run right here. I remember specifically seeing his tweet during that time saying, all right, that's it. I'm ready to go short this market. This is just absolutely stupid. And I remember thinking, because trust me, I had lost multi hundreds of thousands of dollars at this point trying to step in front of trends. I was thinking, why? The market's going up. And you want to tell the market you are smarter than the market. You need to stop. It's like a, a parent scolding a child. Okay, that is that is enough. You need to stop. All right, go sit and time out. That's what he's trying to tell the market. Bro, you don't have big enough pocketbooks. <laughs> you don't have big enough pocketbooks to move the market like that. Um, there is an old adage that says the market can act irrational longer than you can stay solvent. Solvent, right? Meaning, yeah, dude, if you, if you really think that the market's acting irrational, go ahead, bet on it, bet against it, but prepare to go broke, All right? It's akin to standing in front of a train and saying, cut it out, stop right where you are. The train's just gonna run you right over. So I hear what you're saying, the, and, and I, I could absolutely see that because I did it for years, not saying I made any money on it, but that was the way that I had learned to trade, which is stupid, totally wrong. Michael is just messing with me. He's actually from Colorado. I think I remember that now. Now you say that. Austin would have been just too obvious. Dude, I don't like Austin. We talked about this. Mikey Mike, good to see you. All right, let's go on. Going against the major move in the market. And the same, of course, for falling markets. If a market is sliding, uh, plenty of people are trying to pick the bottom. But what are the chances? If you have a market that's gone up for six months or down for six months, 
that you nail the absolute turning point. It's highly unlikely, but let's look at a real example. Let's take a look at um, the euro dollar, which just recently moved out to two and a half year highs. Uh, for context, this was seven years ago. For context, this is from August 2017. There are so many markets we could pick at the moment when it comes to looking at trends, but let's go with euro dollar because it, it hit a two and a half year high last week. And data shows that you know, with, with some brokers, something like 70% of clients were, were selling short the euro. Uh, but you're really trading against the odds. You know, in, in a trend like this, in a strong uptrend, our approach would be looking to buy the dips. You know, if, you're, if you're selling short, look at the sort of moves you're trying to catch. They're, they're tiny moves like this. What are the chances that you're going to pick the absolute top? It's much easier to try and position yourself for maybe the next swing over the next few days, next few hours, next few weeks, you know, whatever your time frame is. So trading with the trend really should be at the core of our approach. Um, but it's one that, that so many uh, get wrong because psychologically it's a difficult thing to do. But I think you know, even in a trend like this, the market okay has gone down for one day, but has gone up in the view we're looking at here, broadly speaking, for the last the last three months. So it's much easier to identify a trend on the chart, and it's pretty clear what the trend is here, and look to trade with that trend. It's much easier to identify a trend on the chart. I mean, even somebody all the way over in the Netherlands could identify the trend on that chart. So there we go. We want to try and trade with the trend. Put the odds in your favor. You know, if a market is, is going up over the time frame you're trading, look to be. All right. Well, mistake number one, I can totally get on with. I think I might agree a lot with this video. Be a buyer. If a market's going down, look to be a seller. I think this the second maybe more, more common problem is um, trading too big. You know, people might open an account with, let's say, a thousand pounds, a thousand euros, a thousand dollars, whatever it is, but they risk far too much on any one trade. And if they do a trade where they're risking losing 250 euros, pounds, dollars, whatever it is, that's a massive risk compared to the size of the account. And I think it's very difficult to look at a market objectively if you're in a trade, if every point the market moves against you or in your favor is a massive sum of money to you, whatever. Absolutely. Now, position sizing is different than risk sizing, right? You can have a 20, per we, we did the math the other day on uh, one of the Steve Burns videos, but it was something like you could have 20% in your portfolio in one particular stock, but only risking 1% overall of your portfolio because you're limiting your losses on the stock to very minimal, right? So um, there's nothing wrong with trading big if you compensate for it on your chart by saying, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm only gonna take, you know, if, if I normally give it, I don't know, $3 of room, I'm only gonna give it one and a half dollars of room because I've gone twice as big. That's equivalent to the same risk. Can you imagine? Right. So it's OK to trade big if you are adequately risking that in your overall portfolio stance. Whatever that sum of money is, you know, so I think we need to trade at a level where we're not obsessing about every small point move in the market. So I think it's a really important part of trading when you start off. And even if your account grows, think, well, look, am I really comfortable with the level of risk I'm taking here? Because if you're not, then every time the market moves a little bit against you, you'll be panicked into making maybe making bad decisions, getting out of the trade too early, or setting your stop loss too tight. Which brings me, I think, to point number three. I think the third, maybe the most common mistake, maybe you're in there with trading against. The okay, what is what do you think most common trading mistake is? I haven't seen this, so I can't uh, I can't give the answer right away. In the chat, let me know what do you think most common trading mistake is. I'm trying to think about my personal trading mistakes. Um, most common trading mistake. I would say trading too big, but he's already said that. So I would say ignoring your plan. I would say most common trading mistake is having a plan to do whatever you're going to do. It doesn't matter. But then when the time comes to actually move on those signals, um, totally ignoring your plan. That was a very common mistake of mine. Brian. All the way from Atlanta. Good to see. You. Assuming the market will never go down. We talked to that on yesterday's video, right? It's like, why would I ever buy it? This is this was the quote. Like he said something like, I would never buy a stock if I even feel like it's going to go down, right? Because why would I ever do that? Well, dude, like um, if if you think it's never going to go down, then mortgage your house and put it all in, right? Yeah, assuming the market will never go down. Stop loss too tight. That's a really good one. Emotional holding on. Really good one, Mikey Mike. Ignoring your plan, definitely. Let's see. The trend. The most common mistake is, I think, when it comes to selling stop losses. You know, first of all, if you're not selling a stop loss, you're just hoping the market is going to go in your favor. You don't really have a strategy for getting out if you're wrong, and that's a real issue. You know, if you can't admit you're wrong, 
Uh, that's a real problem when it comes to trading. But let's say you do use stop losses. You're sensible. You think, I am going to use a stop loss on a trade. Um, I think probably the most common mistake when using stop losses is setting them far too tight. Ooh, Peter nailed it. Good job, Peter. To where the market is trading. And we're going to look at a great example in a second for this. So you, you don't... But, but, but... Hang on. Lots of butts. For me, a half ATR from entry, I feel like is a great place. Now, I didn't make that up on my own. That came from the complete turtle traders. Now, I like the half ATR because that changes. And why I wanted to lead with butts on that is because... Um, let's do some calculations. Right, Tesla... I always like to use Tesla and Coke. They're my two go-tos for a boring stock and an exciting stock. All right, Tesla's current ATR is 17.2, okay? 17.2 divided by 2, 8.6. So 8.6 would be how much room I would give it on a $400 stock, which is, oh man, now I'm going to have to do some real math. Let me open an Excel file here. So Tesla, and then let's do um, ATR. Let's do price and let's do um, percent of price. That I think will be really useful. All right, so the ATR is currently 17.2. Current price is 420. Elon would, I bet he's having a great day today. 17.2, price is 420. And so my half ATR. Is this divided by two? Oh, come on. Yeah, I know. Jeez, give me a break. Two. There we go. So then we say 8.6 divided by 420 is 2.05%. So that's how much room I would give Tesla. Let me learn this bigger. That's how much room I would give Tesla if I were trading it, right? But then how much room would we give Coke for the same half ATR risk? So if we go to Coke, it's KO. And in a really ugly downtrend right now, uh, that's 98 cents, okay, at 62.55. KO, 0. 0.98, 60, eh, 60, no, 62.55, there we go. Copy this formula down, copy this formula down. 78 basis points. So where I'm going with this is that you take a stock that's 17 times more volatile. That's what this means. Tesla is 17 times more volatile. And if you have a half ATR, that's a big difference, right? It's $8 on one and 50 cents on the other. And I'm only giving it 78 uh, basis points of room on the stock, right? So you're saying, I'm only going to give it 78 basis points down to find out if it's going to work versus I'm going to give it 2% down to find out if it's going to work. Now, by doing this, you have to scale down, right? You may have um 17 times bigger position in coke than in tesla but by doing so you take 17 times risk okay so if it's one for one which you shouldn't do in this case or any two assets you should never trade one for one but this is a perfect example as to why when you have a stop loss that you're putting on you need to scale it appropriately to the risk that you're willing to take as well as how volatile the stock is so let's see what he has to say Peter says he learned it the hard way. Don't even give the trade time to uh, work in your favor. You're so worried about losing on the trade, you're not even giving it a chance to be a winner. So um, to see a real example from last week, we're going to take a look at the price of oil. I think oil is, is as good an example as any to illustrate where people can go wrong with stop losses. So what we've got here, we've got uh, each candlestick represents an hour. And we've got the, the last week of July, the beginning of August, as our, as our trading view. Let's take the last day here. So this is on the 4th of August that we've got on our chart here. So the market traded as low as $48.48. That was 11 o'clock in the morning. The high for the day was $49.61. That's at 7 o'clock in the evening, UK time. So the market has traveled through uh, $1.13 of range. So 113 points of range. And that does suggest that's a, that's a pretty typical day. I think for, for the, the price of oil, looking at uh, you know the, the last week, clearly we had a big day there. But typically, you know, a 113 point move is not an unusual one for the price of oil. But plenty of people will try and trade a volatile market like this with incredibly tight stops. You know, let's say you're trading it, you're buying oil somewhere, 
and you're using it. Okay, very very well said, right? If you're trading a, ty- a volatile market, you need to have that bigger stop loss, right? Because it's going to move 17 times more. Let's continue. A 10 point stop, a 15 point stop, a 20 point stop. What are the chances you've got it right? The chances are you're going to get stopped out just in the noise of the market. So you're not giving your trade time to work out. And if you're buying in here because you think it's going up and using a 10, 15 point stop, you're almost asking the market to stop you out, you know, because this is on a day where the market moves through 100 points. You know, so I suggest we need to give some thought to the size of our stops. Don't be afraid to use wider stops and trade a little bit smaller and set them in logical areas rather than just buying or selling randomly and hoping the stop works out. For example, it's always easy to look at these things in the past, of course, but we talked about selling stops before. In the er- well, early morning, so between 8 to 11 o'clock, we saw the market, the price of oil come back down to about $48.50, $48.60. And over the previous couple of days, you can see it here and here and here and here. Whenever we've seen the market dip down to sort of 4830, 4850, we'd see the buyers come back out. So if we're if we're buying in here somewhere, a logical place to have our stop loss is the other side of these old lows. So it might mean if we're buying at 4880, our stop is going in, you know, 60, 70 points away. But if Okay, so he's he's doing more chart based, right? So saying at the the bottom of those candles. So let's let's go take a look at let's look at Nvidia. So let me clear off these order blocks here real quick. All right. So he's saying, like, maybe you wanted to go long. I'm not saying you should, but maybe you'd want to go long. And you see, OK, it's got a lower, it's got a low here and it's got a higher low here. OK, maybe the next low will be somewhere around here. All right. I could put a low or I could put my stop here under this other candle. Right. Some people do that. Absolutely. But that does not take into account the volatility of this stock, right? Now, uh, uh, NVIDIA's volatility is 4.97. So let's do the math here. Current price, 139.63. Right? So that's, that's a different percent than either one of the two, okay? So by having that ATR, you're, you're not trying to guess because that's what he's trying to do here. In a nutshell, he's saying, I guess it's not going to go below this. I guess it's not going to go below this, right? I'm, I'm going to guess that it won't go lower than this. Or you could say, based on the volatility of the stock, based on previous moves of the stock, I know that the average true range is X. I know the average true range is this. So I'm only going to give it half of that to find out if I'm right. If I'm right, then it's going to be great. If I'm wrong, then I have appropriately scaled to fit this volatility on this stock. So good, but I think he could do better. If we're looking for a bigger move, who cares? You know, we're giving the market time to prove us right rather than setting a stop loss that's just going to get taken out during the normal noise and normal trade of the market throughout the day. So there we go. I think the three most common mistakes, trading against the trend, trading far too big in terms of the size of your trades when compared to the size of your account, and probably the most common one, setting stop losses far too tight. So you just get knocked out in a small move against you, which is just normal market noise. So uh, a little bit of a different approach this week, but hopefully, you know, it's... No, that was a decent video. I'm, I'm, I, they're not all going to be winners like this, but I would rate that as... Everybody always says seven. So I would either go with an eight or a six. I wouldn't go so much of a six because I feel like all the rest of the material is really good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rate an eight. Nice job. I like that one. All right, let's go back over here. Uh, so if that was useful to you, share this with somebody who you think that could help. Now let's look over at today's member highlight. Now force a button. I have completely, there it is. This is a professional show, okay? We don't do anything without bumpers. Uh, Michael Wales, how you doing riding the Google train? He's literally the only person who's posted the last day. And then Mahesh, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's got meetings right now. He's does so, uh, Michael Wales, how did it go over in Google? I saw your share your big wins. Let's chat on that. He bought the Google calls this morning at 470, quickly hit his limit of 50% and sold. Um, it was moving so quickly that I beat my limit by almost 15%. I always take quick money, but I'm not a huge fan of trading this style. I don't want want to be a day trader. This one just worked out that way. 
but it speaks volumes to the power of options. When my position closed, the underlying stock was up 4.15% four, 4 ish, and his trade made 65%. Yeah, that is the overwhelming power of options. Well done, my friend. Congratulations on that. Uh, it ran so quick on the open. Dude, take it where you can take it. And as long as it fits your plan, by all means, rock and roll, dude. Uh, so be sure to share your stories in the Discord. And like I say, do me a favor, please. Um, Reply back and let us know how we can make Outlier better for you. That's what I need to know. Um, and then after you do that, tell everybody about Outlier. Now, I know you've already subscribed, so hit the like button. Now, back to trading in the Outlier trading room. Real quick, what is Outlier? How does it work? It's the world's best AI stock trading assistant, allowing you to save time, make money, and start winning with less risk. It's a four-step process. Outlier monitors how investors are reacting to changing market conditions changing market conditions, news, price movements, and the economy. It determines if in investors are acting irrationally, fearful, or greedy, and by how much. Outlier gives buy and sell signals when those irrational behaviors reach an extreme. Number four, allowing you to get into the move, or get in the stock before the outlier move happens. Now, my personal trading strategy is called the golden ticket trading strategy, and it always starts with the market. I want to see the 10 over the 20 with price over the 50. And if we go to the market... Let's uh, make this bigger, turn the order blocks back on. Um, the market actually had an order block, <clears throat> order block that finally materialized as of yesterday. And it very well might close over it today. Um, it looks really, really close to a new all-time high. So that's what I meant yesterday. If you look at the video yesterday, I said, that could be the new short-term trend being down. But then it can change just that fast right because when the trend is moving higher as we watched in the uh common investing mistakes when the trend is moving higher it's much easier as a trader to jump on the trend rather than trying to force it to bend to your will jump on the trend the trend is moving higher but but we still have a sell signal on the spy the bull list new buy signals today is only 10 the bear list new sell signals is 47 and if we look at the market breadth, you can actually see it's under 50% at this point. So less than half of the market is bullish. Less than half of the market is holding this up. So let's go to the S&P 500 map over the last week. I mean, this is the story. And, and, and I can't be the only one who sees this, that everything is red. Minus one, two, three, four, five, six stocks. That's about it. The S&P is market cap weighted. So when those six stocks that are the biggest ones out there, when they start going up, that has an outsized impact versus everybody else um, going down, right? And Tesla being up 17% in a week is crazy talk. Google up 12% in a week. These are big numbers. So. Those big stocks moving big numbers is going to have an outsized move on the market. I'm not saying there's any sort of conspiracy. I'm sure there's plenty of conspiracies out there, but I am saying that right now, we've only got a handful of stocks holding up the market, which is not, in my opinion, the best place to be. So I'm gonna sit out and hold cash. Uh, Dave says, congrats, I almost got in on that as well and got stuck on other things. Peter said, thanks again. So that's gonna wrap it for me today. Um, no trading. Right, the market breadth is coming down. We still got a sell signal on the SPY, but that is okay, right? As a trader, that doesn't mean you have to be doing anything. What that means is being ready, being available, being set up so that the moment you see an opportunity that fits your plan, my plan can be different than yours, that is opportunity that fits your plan, you don't let it pass you by. Now, Thank you so much for being an outlier. We couldn't do this without you. We want to pay you back every single day by helping you save time, make money, and start winning with less risk together as a team. Don't forget, you can get the annual plan for 45% off over outlier.com. Ends at the end of the month. Let us know if you need anything in the Discord. Tell everybody you know about this after you hit the like button. Have a fantastic afternoon. See you right back here tomorrow. We'll talk soon.